I am just uh, waiting for Jeff or someone else with a fancy hat to join before I start. I think Jeff is traveling. He's out for a few weeks. And I'm oh, guessing okay. I'm guessing Brian is you know, busy, might be a little bit late. So maybe do you want to just get started? Fine, fine, fine. I don't have a fancy hat, but between us we can get started. Yeah. Between us we have half a fancy hat. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let me make sure that I am 100% sharing the right screen. I don't see anything. I know, I'm making sure that I'm choosing the right one. Do you want Tim to help you? Uh, no, that didn't work so well last time. <laughs> okay, I see Easy the right now. document. Easy now. Okay, so uh, those of you who had left some comments on the DOT spec, uh, you might have noticed that last night, um, in true engineer procrastinator style, I went through and, and scrubbed some of those comments and um, added some content to the doc and started working to reconcile some of those comments. So I figured today we can step through the doc live. I don't think it'll take a full hour. Um, and see where we land. Okay, um, and there's been some other new ones that um, since the last time we spoke about this on, I think it was like the 20th of February. Um, okay, so first off, there's this comment of adding a header. I'm assuming this is a like a, a misclick. So I'm just gonna reject it. Okay. Uh, we have this introduction, we have audience. I guess I added a second introduction because I forgot that the first introduction was up here. But basically, um, there had been a couple comments to try to clarify scope, where scope is focused purely on um, firmware update, right? But it's an architecture that could be extended to include things like device config and debug authorization and such. So I added this like scope thing and I, I kind of bundled the necessity of DOT in with scope. Um, I can move these to the upper introduction section if we'd like, that's just above the audience. Um, but yeah, I think Theo um, and others, we, we had, there had been some comments around the scope. So maybe take a look here in the document and um, see if this kind of meets your, your ask or your need. Also pause to see if anybody's reading it live. This is more a structural change. I don't think it's anything more than that. Okay. Uh, so just one clarification. When you say device firmware, you basically mean the root of trust, right? Um. Sorry, I'm trying to find Zoom so I can tell who I'm talking to. Um, uh, uh, Sanjeev. Yeah, I, I mean, I I don't quite know how to answer that. Um, uh, no, because the, the, what I, I'm just trying to just clarification question because there the, the are multiple layers of firmware, right? So I'm just trying to understand this is specifically for the ownership in the sense of the root of trust, right? Um, no, it would be the firmware in the system. Like, you know, ownership could be, you know, a cloud provider might want to give, you know, the the tenant that renting the machine may want to know what is the full environment that I'm running in. Okay, so basically, root of trust, right? The the SOC firmware, right? That's what you mean. So, 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 okay, so, so the reason I'm hesitating on root of trust, right, is because a lot of times when we talk about this, we, we've talked previously around the idea of, of ownership transfer starting at like FMC and later, right? So, yes. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're talking about that starting at FMC and later, then I struggle to say that you're transferring ownership of the root of trust, right? I, 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 I guess that's why, uh, that's yeah, yeah. kind of why I'm struggling here. So basically, like uh, with the dice structure, we have FMC. You're right after the FMC, what we have, the, what we call device firmware, right? That is what you meant. That 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 piece of firmware, right? Or the, the or the 
basically what what I was trying to say is that in the server platform there can be multiple pieces of firmware. What you're talking about is a, the platform to trust, and then there's a FMC, and then there's a device firmware, and that is what you're talking about, right? That is what I meant. I'm not, I'm honestly not specifying, right? Okay. I I'm I'm not I'm not actually being that um that particular. I, I think there's probably, if you recall, I think Paul Kaler, um, not on the call today, but Paul Kaler, when we presented this at the at OCP Global Summit last fall, right? Paul had asked a question in the audience that was about where does a BMC land, for example, right? Is a BMC an edit yeah. firmware or is it no edit firmware? So, I mean, yeah, I, I, mean I, I, I generally think I mean. that... Yeah, so I mean, I generally think that there's a there's a variety of there's some device specific um, and even device vendor specific nuance to where the boundary is, right? I don't in terms of what you're transferring ownership of um, yeah. and the archetype that it fits into. I don't know, Eric, if you have additional comments. No, I I agree with you, Chris. I think it we don't want to be too restrictive here, and I think it's broader than just the root of trust. Okay. It could be Thanks. the application processors, the you know that you know that might be processing you know the customer data, doing transforms on it, whatever it might be. I think that's also could be in scope here. Okay. Yeah. Just I just want to clarify. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, do we need to change the title of the spec uh, if you have the scope? Sorry. What? 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 What, are you, what would you propose changing it to? Um, so this is really about a firmware verification of the uh, device ownership transfer, right? So, okay, so I, I talked about this at, it, when we presented last fall, right? But the idea is it's an architecture that that right now covers, yes, for, firmware validation, right? But that the, the architecture can be extended to include other things such as device config, et cetera. It's just that the the point in time scope for the for the beginning is yes focused on firmware validation. Okay, so if the scope extends in the future, you would add sessions to this document, not a new document. Yes, I would expect that we would add the, the relevant content. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, because I mean, it, from my perspective, I certainly don't think we want to end up with multiple ownership transfers that are all different for different purposes, right? I, th I think the idea here is this is sort of the high level architecture that could be used for a variety of use cases, right? But right now, just as a starting point, it's focused on untangling um, firmware. Okay. Okay, um, da, 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 these are the comments from Theo. Okay, so then the next comment, actually you, you had provided, I think the next comment, which was around a security model. I don't know if you've had a, I see you're looking at the doc right now. Um, I actually, at the end of the document, we're gonna scroll down to the end, apologies for the scroll. So uh, uh, you said security model, I think I read Kind of threat model. Yes, threat model. I, yeah. I started putting together two tables. I don't, I, I don't know of another OCP document that's put together a threat model, um, like for example, any of our recovery stuff or any other pieces. So I don't know if there's an existing format or structure that people would prefer to see. Um, this is very, very simplistic and straightforward. And I just tried to bundle like, yeah. So I, I guess the, qu the question I have is like, is there a preference for how this is approached? Like, is it, was your feedback really around wanting to high level talk about like, so, so this first table is just kind of a list of, okay, I have a rogue BMC. What could you do with a rogue BMC? I have a compromised CAC. What, what does that mean? Right. This, this is in, in some ways um, agnostic to the actual like volatile versus mutable locking. Right. But alternately, what you could have been asking for was a threat model that was more focused on volatile versus mutable locking. Like what are threats that are applicable to volatile versus threats that are applicable to mutable locking and what the mitigations look like for that. I guess, so it, it, uh, I'll answer your question by asking you a question, which is, is there a, a preference for kind of which of these we want to build in this document? 
Um, so the two tables reflect two aspects of the threat model, is it right? So you're asking which table is more applicable? Yeah, I'm basically asking like, are you are, are you asking, there, there's an, if you talk about a threat model with device ownership transfer, there's a number of ways to interpret that, right? Like one could be, what is the threat model that results in needing device ownership transfer, for example? Mm -hmm. Another one could be, what is a threat model relevant to the specific proposed archetypes of ownership transfer, read volatile the and mutable was, locking, right? Right, the latter one, yes. Um, so you have these solutions, right? Um, the CAK, LAK, all that. Uh, the purpose of those keys and how do you, uh, how do you picture the uh, threats? Like, what is a physical attacker having physical access to the platform, and what's his uh, skill level? <clears throat> it's um, um, criminal enterprise, right, or university research. Um, mm -hmm. So based on all those assumptions, you define the mitigation plans in all these uh, states. Uh, so what kind of threat you are in scope to mitigating? What kind of threat is not in scope? That kind of um, analysis. Okay, so so it's really this ladder table that you're right. sort of asking to build yes. out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, d does anybody here know if there's any existing, like th is there an existing OCP security document that has like a, a threat model format that I can like, or I should say we can leverage as a starting point. I've heard rumor of one from several years ago, but I have not looked at it recently. <laughs> I've heard rumor. Okay. Do you, do you know what, what document or what topic it was on? Uh, no. Okay. I will, I will do some poking around. So, okay. So Jack, uh, uh, Calipra in fact has an excellent uh, threat model and mitigations also for that the, the calibra spec it's a uh, yeah oh, oh, fabulous in fact okay let me take a note of that okay so that helps clarify i can go look at calibra and and um basically build something that looks similar and we can then iterate on that. Um, Great, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to scroll back up and pick back up where we left. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm just going to leave a comment here. Okay, now scrolling down, scrolling down. Okay, so is Theo on the call today? No, it doesn't look like he is. Okay, so so Theo had, had a, a really good piece of feedback here about the basically order of operation and like, should you actually provision the LAK first before you provision the CAK? So I, I'm going to scroll down to the state diagram. So basically what, what Theo is asking is in, in the flow that we're proposing right now, you install the CAK and then you install the LAK, which is the locking key. So again, the CAK is used for um, firmware authentication and then the LAK is used just to lock that CAK to the device, right? Um, hang on a second. Okay, I was looking at the chat. Um, and then with DOT disabled, you basically just install the LAK, right? So we actually had quite a bit of internal discussion where we debated what Theo is asking about, where Theo is basically saying, well, what if you do the LAK first and then you use the LAK to um, authenticate the CAK installation? I mean, the, the reason that I would advocate against that is because if you change the order of operations and you think about it overlaid on top of like device state and trying to, um, I mean, it, at a high level, the state diagram gets really complicated because it means the first key you're provisioning is a key that you want to remain um, non-volatile. And then you have to think about how you distinguish, you either make it a third key. So you have a, a CAK and LAK and then a DOT disable key. Right, so that you can your state diagram would basically look like three distinct branches, if that makes sense. You have one branch for volatile, one branch for mutable locking, and another one for DOT disabled. 
And then you also have to kind of handle the, the error cases around what happens if you install the locking key, but then you don't install the, the CAK um, and, and things like this, right? So what we found is that from a sort of implementation perspective, um, things kind of come more cleanly together if you do the CAK first followed by the LAK. But I guess, um, yeah, I'm open to feedback and I'm open to discussion in this area. If people think they've figured out a way to make the reverse um, work cleanly, or if we think that there's a security property that's better satisfied um, by by flipping the the order. Without Theo here, I'm not sure if anybody's going to have feedback. But I'll pause anyway. So I'm just trying to understand. So LAK is basically locking key, right? So, yes. uh, uh, so someone who, who can do it, he must be someone. And the owner has to generate a public and private key pair. And basically, somehow, there's got get this LAK installed, right? And then I think probably the question is, uh, once it is uh, transferred to a, to an owner with the LAK, then it can, that that owner can uh, uh, basically install the CAK. Whereas in this flow, it seems to be that uh, initially, because of the TOFU model, you can simply put the CAK first because your first in, uh, transiting to volatile, where actually it is not really locked to a, a specific owner, right? It is just he, uh, he has a signing key, but it's not locked to the that owner. It, was that the idea for having this this flow rather than having first LAK and then CAK? Yeah, so I mean, at a high level, if you imagine, um, I, I, I wish I had a way to kind of whiteboard this, but basically if you, if you imagine that you install the LA key, a locking key first, right? Then e either yeah. you, like right now we propose that, that there's this LAK that's used both for the DOT disabled state as well as immutable locking state, right? So yeah. if you, so try to think about this state diagram reflected yeah. also in the actual command set that would be required by a device to support this, right? So in this case, if you have a single command that's something like um, install locking key, right? Then it, and you and your flow for resulting in mutable locking requires that you install the locking key first, right? But you have a single command under sort of underneath. You, you need some way to th then obviously you have this problem where you can't tell whether you're trying to arrive at the mutable locking state or you're trying to just do DOT disabled, right? And and theoretically, I guess you you could. Um, you could just assume DOT disabled until you then install the CAK, right? I mean, you need to think yeah. through corner cases yeah. that are potentially device specific and things like that, right? Or alternately, you end up needing separate commands, one to install the mutable locking key and another to install the DOT disabled key, yeah. right? And these are actually discrete yeah. discrete keys yeah. with separate paths yeah. on the on the state diagram. So, so I, 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 what I, the way I understood this flow was that because we have a volatile state where the, it is not that it is not locked to anyone, so we just need a uh, signing key. Uh, we don't need LAK. That's how I understood. Right? Because if we yeah. don't have volatile state, then is, uh, we can we have to start with LAK only, right? LAK is required for both of them, but DOT disabled also and for also for mutable locking. Lock. Yeah, so I mean, the, the, the idea in the current architecture is that you always transition through the volatile state, yeah. like yeah. on your way to mutable locking, right? Yeah. So basically the first key you install is the CAK. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then the device operates in volatile if you never install the LAK, but if you do install the LAK, then you transition yeah. to mutable locking. Yeah, then it makes right? sense. Yeah, this flow makes sense to me. To, yeah, so what I was commenting before is that is that we found, we meaning NVIDIA found that this flow helps reduce kind of corner cases that you have to manage with regards to um, device state, as well as reducing the overall number of, um, it makes the state diagram a lot simpler, right? And and because of that, it, it, it means um, all the extra pieces that come with this um, are, are a little bit easier to manage, right? Which is why I would advocate for keeping the CAK first, then the LAK. But like I said, I'm 
I'm happy to discuss this further if someone has an alternate proposal. So, okay, I'm going to scroll back up. Um, okay, so then there is this comment here from Anonymous um, saying, after an authorized unlock, are the CAC pub keys expected to be valid? Uh, the answer is yes. So if you go back to this state diagram, basically what they're asking is I go from default state to volatile by installing the CAK. I then install an LAK and I lock the device. I then do an authorized unlock. When you do the authorized unlock, you'll notice it returns you back to the volatile state. It doesn't return you back to the default starting state. So the intent is that you really transition back to the volatile state. And if you don't perform a device power cycle or, or reset or... Um, yeah, basically, then, th then the, the CAK would still be used for things like an update. Um, it would just be volatile. So I'm not sure who left that, that question, of course, but hopefully I've answered that question. Uh, okay. I'm going to keep scrolling. Theo provided some feedback about uh, this verbiage around attestation. Um, he's not here, so I think we'll wait to discuss that. He's basically asking about um, how should we word this needing robust attestation. Okay, then there's this other feedback around what do I mean by hostile location? When I wrote this, I was mainly thinking of um, physical presence. Um, and... Uh, there's a lot of implementation specific details here. For example, if you're going to implement ownership transfer um, in a device IROD or in an EROD, there's a lot of there's a lot of additional threat model pieces that can't be covered without that implementation specific detail. So generally, I'm trending to removing this sentence um, just because I, I think that um, defining what you mean by hostile likely depends on device implementation and and deployment model. So it, it might not be fit to include here. I don't know, is there any feedback on this? Yeah, probably better to put it in the threat model uh, for the wildhouse state. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can think about how to do that. I, th I think my concern about implementation specific details still matters, right? Um, so yeah, I'll delete that sentence and, and then try to include it in the threat model. Um, okay, next from Brian, the cat. <laughs> um, how the cat and the lack impact identity. Jeff was gonna work on this. I don't think he's added that section, so we're still working on this. Um, and that includes, I think, his second question. Um, how all this stuff comes together. I think the answer here, no, but we need to, to come Put together the proposal. Okay, there's a question here from Raj about um, the CAK for tenant. We covered this on the call. I'm not sure if it really answered the question. I'll leave it open for another couple of days before marking this as resolved. This was around how does tenancy transfer where you have this multi-tiered approach, how would this work? Um, and we have some theoretical, um, some ideas for how that could work, but there's some question on how the keys get shared and that I think that's largely out scope for this for the spec. Okay, now still scrolling, still scrolling. Okay, then there's feedback from Brian again about um, dice and device identity. Jeff is gonna add a section. I think we need to follow up on that. You know, we've all been busy. I also took an action to talk to Jeff and Eric about this and we never did that. So yeah, Eric, we should probably go do that. Yep. Yep, I think we're probably good, but we should just clarify and make sure it's all going to work. Just don't need to go do this. Okay. Okay, so that's the end of the comments that have been left. So I have some action items, especially around the threat model piece and some other kind of um, working on the verbiage up at the top. Um, are there any, yeah, I don't know. Are there, are there any other questions or comments or... Feedback from people? Are there other people that are interested in assisting or, um, yeah. So, so one, one thing I've 
wondered about is at the beginning of the meeting, you mentioned that there may be things that get added uh, to be protected by these mechanisms, right? Not, not just the ability to sign firmware or to verify the signature, uh, specific uh, firmware signature, right? N now, as we start adding things like configuration and so on and so forth, uh, is it possible to support cases in which the configurations are changeable, but the firmware is not? Right, meaning the manufacturer says this is the firmware and you cannot use any other firmware, but you actually can change the configurations. Right, so that, that kind of puts uh, an interesting case for the entire document, which is centered around just the firmware. Well, I mean, I want to be clear, right? Like, if you, if you, if you look at the state diagram, right, you'll notice, I mean, there's, there's nothing in here that talks about, um, this is basically a mechanism for installing keys, right? And there, there's nothing here that talks about that's that's predicated upon a firmware update, right? So, I, I mean, to to me, the the the, arch, the general architecture is extensible to cover any scenario, right? And and there's nothing kind of in the in the bones or the foundation of the thing that would need to be changed um, to accommodate the use case you're describing. But is there a mechanism that the manufacturer needs to specify what those keys are going to be protecting or not protecting, right? Like, for example, to say the manufacturer, I think it's a manufacturer's decision, right, to say uh, the firmware cannot be changed, but I support ownership, which means other stuff can be changed mm -hmm. with these keys. So is there a way for the manufacturer to state that, or is this something that is inherent to the device itself, right? And, and it's just by design, there's no configuration or anything like that. No, I mean, I, I to, to me, again, we're, we're starting with one use case that, yeah, is focused on firmware. And if, if we have the other use cases, then, I mean, it, it, what I would say is if you want to propose additions to this that talk about what you're what, what you're hinting at then then let's get some some words on paper and we can see how to integrate it into the document right mm -hmm. um I, 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 and and including things like um uh installing key used for configuration but not not um not not firmware um yeah i guess right. I, I don't I might, I might be missing something but i i, I don't see a uh like a, any sort of blocker here or anything of the sort right it's just a matter of trying to start with one use case, but having an architecture that I believe is extensible to accommodate other use cases. And then as we see those other use cases, we can certainly add text that talks about how such a thing is, is supported, right? But I mean, it, we need to have the same conversation around, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we need to have the same conversation that I think we frequently have here at OCP, which is how, how prescriptive do we get in, in the document, right? Um, mm -hmm. And we talked about the, this with some of the command structure, right? Like, are we actually going to go define like MCTP VDMs for doing all of these things, or um, to, or, or something of the sort, right? So, I mean, to me, that's where the conversation lies. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Chris. I guess our firmware is changing here, right? If you are moving from a default default state uh, to a in a specific owner, and then you come back to default again, you go to a new owner, right? The new owner will have its own uh, CAK and its own uh, firmware, right? We have an ownership transfer that way, right? Firmware, uh, when we move from one owner to another owner, uh, first owner gets uh, installed its keys, then you go to a default state, then you again go to say volatile and to new owner, uh, and and new owner puts its locking key. So the firmware is changing, right? New owner firmware is going getting installed. Is that yeah, the case, or? Yeah, yeah. So so in the, the I mean in the, in the current architecture, yes, the idea is. I mean, I, you you could debate what you mean by new firmware, right? But it, it, because for example, in the case where you have a no edit um, firmware, yeah. then it, it's it's ostensibly the same firmware image. It's just been dual signed, right? Once by the yeah, device yeah. owner, once by the vendor. Yes. But I mean, yes, the, the this current architecture but, but, but the is focused changes, on when it goes to new owner, it can install its own firmware, right? Yes. Yeah, that is what I mean. Yeah. And the configuration but, will also change accordingly because new, whether it goes to new owner, new owner will have its own configuration, right? It, 
Yeah, so, so to clarify, the question was whether was not about whether or not this suppose supports ownership transfer, it does. The question was, what specifically is there, is, is it architected uh, what that CAK protects, right? Okay. Like for example, you say, is it the firmware plus configuration one plus configuration two, right? Yeah. Is that something that we're going to architect so that the manufacturer can set or is that something that we say, okay, no, it's up it. to the device, right? Okay, the, the, okay. the device decides. And if you buy a device from vendor X, when you set that CAK, it means yeah, yeah. these things are protected. Yeah, what I understand the CAK is for the signing key for the firmware, right? So, uh, yeah, but that, that, uh, yeah, that, that, that's what I've been trying to explain is that, that, that that's, only, that's the starting point, right? To, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to the question, that, that's the starting point, but that's, that's not necessarily the end state, right? Yeah. So if we if we want to add the other like configuration um, pieces, then then let's add it, right? Then let's yeah. let's get pen on paper and yeah. and add the text we think we need. Uh, the way I was thinking the configuration will be handled is through, through the dice mechanism, where when you generate a certificate from a specific firmware, that time you can add into the in the calculation the firmware and also the configuration parameters, so that it is basically bound to the firmware and also to the uh, to the configuration, so that re remotely you can the owner can attest it is okay. The same configuration which is installed. That's how I was thinking. Maybe I. Maybe. That's how I was thinking that yeah, that is the dice basically will uh, take into consideration both the firmware and also the configuration, and uh, somehow it will bake into the certificate for that specific firmware, and then owner can basically uh, someone verifier can attest that it's owned by this uh, this owner and this is the uh, configuration associated with this firmware. Uh, config change certainly uh, has an optional CDIL zero uh, regeneration also. Um, in the DICE architecture, the compound device identifier will uh, can change yeah. if a config file changes and then yeah. maybe the DICE certs need to be regenerated. Yeah, that is what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in fact, yeah, but that's, Chris, that's, uh, so the case of configuration that I'm talking about is not what gets attested to is, for example, right, uh, Chris, I think you were asking for an example of the things that we may want to add here. Mm -hmm. One, something that people like to do, right, and I think Microsoft is big on this, is to say, I just got a new device. It has this set of keys that get generated from, uh, some, from a UDS, right? that comes with the device and, and, and then of course, depend on the firmware and a bunch of other stuff, right? But they say, when I get this new device, I don't want to generate the same key, even if the firmware hasn't changed. I wanna be the owner, which means I wanna generate a key that is different from the key that the manufacturer put in, put in right? And this is where this LDEV ID and IDEV ID concept comes in, right? LDEV ID being logical device. So. What, what you say as the owner is to say, if I'm the owner, I wanna be able to add an extra seed or an extra term that is going to be added to the generation of the key so that the key, that, the key hierarchy that comes up once I take ownership, right? If I've set up this value is different from, the, from what the manufacturer had, right? That's, that's, for example, something that I think should go into ownership because you don't want so, somebody else so, to come and change your seat and all that kind of stuff. Can I interrupt you for a second? So we had yeah. a long discussion about what the word ownership means like a year or two ago. And, and this, this is a consequence of calling this ownership transfer, but we're, we're not talking about anything to do with, with like dice key derivation here. This is, this is strictly an authentication key that is used to like sign things. Right. By, by an external entity being consumed by the device. Like we're not talking about identity generation here at all, unless I've missed something. Right. So then that's, that goes back to the point, right? Should we make this specific to the firmware and those subjects, or if we open it up, it's, it's not, no, but it's, people start thinking it's not about specific all to the firmware. It's specific to things that the device uses a public key to validate before consuming. So firmware configuration, it, it doesn't any data that the device reads in and needs to authenticate. Yes, so 
in my okay. case, in my case, if I'm adding a seed, the only way that the device would accept that seed is if it's signed with this key, right? If it's not signed with this key, the device doesn't change it. So it is part of ownership. Sure, but well, no, no, it's it's configuration data. So see, that's that's why I really, really hated using the word ownership for any of this because uh, it it gets confusing. Mm -hmm. This spec is talking about secondary signing keys, signing keys, right? It's it's signing mm -hmm. key transfer. It's not like stop stop thinking of it as ownership or related in any way to ownership. It's really just signing keys. So if you want to if you want to toss in a seed value as part of the configuration data, fine, but that is completely orthogonal to what this spec is talking about. And if you want to protect it, who it's anything, is able any to authenticated put that seed. data, code, data, whatever you have, anything you need to authenticate that you need a signature over, this is managing the signing key. And that's all it's doing is managing signing keys. Right. So for the case where you're putting a new seed, can this be the signing key for that seed? It it I don't care what you're signing. That's that's my right. point. Like sign sign whatever you want that the device needs to consume that needs to be authenticated. I, I explicitly right. don't want to talk about what is being signed. I think to Chris's point, like it it we're talking about firmware now because we want to add secondary signatures to firmware, but like it's, mm -hmm. it's almost immaterial to this spec what is being signed. Okay, so yes. And my question was specifically, who knows or who determines what is can, has to be signed by this key? That that was the, the, the only question, right? Is this is the manufacturer that says in this device, when you use this key called CAK, right? The, the following things have to be, are protected by it. I, I think it, it would be which bad goes beyond to put into this spec expectations about what gets signed with the key. Okay, so so what you're saying is that in that the expectation here is that the device, if you buy a device, you read in the manual, it says when you use the CAK, these are the things that are protected by it for this particular device, but it's not architected. Well, I, I currently, and Chris can correct me here, but I don't think this spec says anything about what is signed by the key particularly. Right, like if if we think we need to put that in here, but I I would argue that that would be like an addendum or a separate document. I don't think because this is really the mechanism for doing the key management. Right, this is a this is a, a a description of how to do key management, not about what the key gets used for. And I don't know that okay. we want to mix those in the same document. It, it, and it's there not, is a it's brief a mention. The, the, it is mentioned here, Matt, just like okay. it, th this kind of talks about firmware in the cellular signature versus dual signature, but yeah. Yeah, and I I don't think it, it matters if we do it here or somewhere else, but there has to be something that says either we don't care, this is just a, a key management proposal, right? And the key could sign anything. Maybe that we, we put that at the beginning of the document, right? Or we say... This is what we expect would go in the key and the manufacturer decides what's that. I, I don't know, some statement like that. So people don't get confused and think it's just firmware. Yeah, it, maybe the answer is to take like firmware out of this archetype statement because I think the edit and no edit applies to whatever you're signing. Mm -hmm. Like maybe, or, or we explicitly talk about, you know, like firmware is an, like, I don't know how explicit it is in here that firmware is an example, but like make it clear that we could be applying the signing key to whatever. But the CAK yeah, it, C is code, right? Could be config. Uh, I'm just saying the terminology table says C is code. Okay, well, I can change the terminology table. Right. I mean, it, so, I mean, I think my fundamental, my, my personal starting point to, to answer the question around like the device vendor piece, right, had been that like th there's th this, this becomes a specification that describes 
like the uh, how you land keys, right? That are used for signing things, right? And then the the per device, like what are the things that get signed is then a conversation between device vendor and their respective customers, sort of dictating what's appropriate for their devices and use cases, right? And it would not be specified in this document. Yes. Because yes. I, I don't I don't want to add language that covers the myriad of devices and then what what ownership transfer means for all of those different devices, blah, 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 blah. That doesn't yeah, that, feel like the right path. That that makes sense. So so maybe so I wonder if we need to go one step further and say this is this is a way to uh, manage this type of keys. And as an example, these keys could be, for example, for supporting ownership transfer. Right. So ownership sure. Ownership transfer, trans, transfer is just an example of what you could do with this technology, not what the technology is about. Well, un unfortunately, some definitions of ownership transfer have devolved meaning at man managing signing keys. Like if, if we want to revisit the discussion of what ownership means, but like we've we've had this disclaimer in every discussion about ownership in the last two years. Yeah, I, I mean, like you said, uh, that that uh, if, ownership. If we want to go back and find another name complex. for this that is not ownership to disambiguate, yeah, I'm not in favor of that. I'm just saying, like we've we've argued about this in circles for a while. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I left a bunch of comments here. I mean, the the, the other thing I'll say is that um. I mean, I, I think we we shared on the call last week that we we tried to turn off a bunch of the anonymous stuff um, because there were comments that were being resolved when they when they weren't being resolved when they weren't actually resolved. But I, I'd also just sort of make the comment that like um, it, 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 any uh, the polite nudge that anybody is welcome to uh, uh, highlight text and then leave a comment um, proposing what what the text should say, right? So um, I, I welcome if the, if there's strong feedback around how to rework sections, for example, removing from or from this section and trying to make it more agnostic, and allowing sort of like we we these are keys used for signing. Then I, I welcome um, help with uh, penning changes to the to the spec to accommodate that or document. I guess I should say. Um, that's all the that, that's all the comments in the document. Are there other topics on this that people would like to cover today? Um, Chris, uh, so uh, here I had to add that. Um... So we have we uh, we have the RMA state. So when a device is sent to RMA, then also we'll have to initiate an ownership transfer. Say it uh, uh, moves out of the data center to the device manufacturer. So I will believe you did have certain topics on that on the device RMA and repair. Uh, yeah, it's at the end of the document here. Right. But the but but this is basically lifted from the prior document. There's there's nothing really there, there's there's nothing really different from what was already proposed before. Oh. Okay. Uh, so I mean, I, I, I recommend re I, I recommend review, but I think the the key takeaway is that this is very this is very um, similar, if not identical, to what was already discussed with the prior ownership transfer work. Right. So, so only I think um, question would be that: uh, Do we recommend um, initiating an ownership transfer when the device is sent out for for RMA, and then likely for reuse also, if like uh, the the circular uh, reusability? So that time it has to necessarily be transferred. Yeah, I mean, th th this is covered in the document, right? It, 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 but it, I mean, generally speaking, th there are scenarios in which an, an authorized unlock cannot be performed, right? 
Um, for example, if the LAK becomes like corrupt or something of the sort, um, or someone locks the device uh, maliciously, or you lock it not maliciously, but then your signing operation isn't working correctly. So, I mean, there's a number of scenarios in which like the the unlock prior to RMA is likely not feasible. Additionally, I don't know that OCP should get in the business of defining RMA and, and repair flows for <laughs> device vendors. I, I struggle with that, right? So um, I certainly don't think that we should be prescriptive around thou shalt go, thou shalt go do like customer shall do or, or device owner shall do unlock prior to um, returning to device vendor. Um, but it, I mean, at a high level, yes, you're, you, you're correct, which is why I think it's covered here in the device decommission, right? What do you do in order to decommission a device? And if you're immutable locking or DOT disabled, you do the authorized unlock and then you power cycle the device, right? Um, Okay. Okay. I so I, I guess if if you have questions here, I, I would I would ask that you review the section and then leave comments with with feedback. Certainly. Thank you. Yeah. Can you uh, share a link to the latest version of the document? Share. Copy link done. Yeah. There, I just dropped it in meeting chat, Paul. Got it. Thanks, Chris. No problem. And there's a question in the chat around do people return parts back from RMA and want to redeploy them back into the field as if nothing happened? Um, that is a how do, you, how do you answer that question? That is a highly, uh, there, there's some customer specificity is what I would say, or device owner specificity regarding their expectation for um, parts that are uh, show up as spares. Um, I don't quite know how to, how to answer this. Depends yeah, on whether you're... I think it's really going to depend on the device and how it's made and what how the RMA flows works and what's exposed and not. I think that's very device and implementation specific. Okay, any other questions, comments? Again, I, I ask people to take a look at the doc. I provided the link in chat. Um, thanks, Paul, for the reminder. I welcome comments and feedback, proposed proposed edits, et cetera. And we'll try to um, hammer this into uh, a good state. Yeah, I downloaded that uh, as uh, docx format. For whatever reason, I didn't see any of the comments. Maybe I just didn't look far enough. Should the comments have been visible? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how, uh, I don't know how comments work with um, downloading as, as a, as a docx. I do not know. When was the last time this version was updated in Google docs? You mean like when were the last time there were edits to it? Yes. Correct. Uh, last night at about 11 PM mountain. Hmm. Okay. All right. I'll have to <laughs> find some other way of downloading this. Thank you. And then during this call. And maybe during that this call. Too. Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh hmm. does anybody know what the what what the do we have any of the people with fancy hats on? No. So is Darpana here? No. Elaine, you're here. Um, what, what, what is our agenda for next week? Is, is the BMC stuff our agenda for next week, or is that two weeks from now? It's two weeks from now. Okay, so do we know, does anybody know if we have an agenda for next week? No, uh, what I understand that today we were also supposed to cover attestation by Roxana. So yes, that's true. Oh, whoops. <laughs> That's the because, uh, because we are supposed to spend less time on this uh, ownership transfer and more on attestation. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, Roxana. 
No, not at all. It was worth it. <laughs> okay, so then I, again, I don't have fancy hat, but do we want to propose that we cover the attestation stuff a week from now? The schedule shows that it's empty. It's open a week okay. from the 19th. Then I so think let's do, let, makes sense. Yeah, let's, let's do the thing then. We can we can cover the attestation a week from now and then BMC two weeks from now. Sure, that sounds a good plan. Cool. Uh, I will send an email to Jeff um, saying as much. Um, we can get it get it sorted. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, really Chris. appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you.